Friends, buddies, pals, how you doing? Welcome back to another video. I've just done a couple of hours on the river, just swinging my way around, just having a poke around. And in that time, I've seen some really bad examples of fish handling and just general fish care. So I'm gonna show a couple of videos, which are old videos, but everything in them still applies today and always will. Some of you may have seen these before, Sorry about that if you have, but if you haven't, take a look at them, think about what I'm saying in it, and just try and apply that to your own fishing. I'll go through a few things now. I don't know what your experience is, so I'm gonna go over just a few key things that I think about a lot, and then you might already know them, you might agree with them, you might not, it's just my opinion. Uh, and you might come across a couple of things that you hadn't thought of before. It's just what I think. And that's all. I think it starts before you even put a fly in the water. Now, I'm a big fan of barbless hooks. I've fished barbless hooks since I was like super little. And I know there's arguments for and against, but it's just my personal feeling. I try real hard not to bust fish off, but occasionally it happens. And I'm a big believer that if you've got a barbless hook and you bust a fish off, once that tension comes off, that fish has got a really, really strong chance of getting rid of that hook really, really quickly. I hate the thought of leaving flies in fish. I just I don't like it at all. I think if you fight a fish properly, then you won't lose any more fish than you would if you had a barb on. And you know what, so what? If you do lose a couple of fish here and there because you're using barbers hooks, I'm actually all right with that. Because at the other end of the scale, if you leave a fly in a fish, that thing's got a real good chance of coming out. Most of the time, once a fish gets in the net and the tension comes off, the hook just falls out anyway. So I imagine it's gonna be the same deal if you bust a fish off. Same thing's gonna happen. And that makes me feel better. Secondly, um, like tippet, I always fish as heavy as I can get away with. And I'm a big fan of fighting a fish really hard, getting it into the net really quickly, not messing around with it. If you fight a fish to the point of like complete exhaustion, then it's got a very small chance of actually living whether it swims off or not. So I fight a fish hard, I get it in the net as quickly as I possibly can. And then once I've got it in the net, I'm all about recovery. Keeping that fish in the water, touching it as little as possible, making sure it's upright in the net, and just recovering, recovering, recovering. So barbless hooks, strong tip it, fight a fish hard. And once it's in the net, just making sure it's recovering the whole time. And I've Barbers are just so good for easy unhooking and just minimal damage on the fish. You could call me the barbless Nazi. Just ask Gareth. <clears throat> while I'm messing around trying to get my camera ready or if you're fishing with a buddy while he's messing around getting the camera ready and that sort of thing, it's just super important to make sure that fish is one, upright in the water and then two, like fully submerged. So the whole time it's just recovering and chilling out and breathing. And then just making sure that before you touch them, your hands are wet. And then when it comes to handling a fish, I'm a thumb and forefinger around the tail kind of guy. I know some people like to hold them this way because it shows the tail off better. And yeah, it does, but I feel like I've got a lot more control over the fish the way I do it. You know, so if it does get a bit lively, you've got less chance of dropping it. I'm gonna take my thumb and my forefinger, and I'm gonna put that around his tail, and that's where I can kind of squeeze a bit and like get some control. And then my other hand, I'm just gonna support the fish, just on my fingers. I'm not gonna squeeze him, I'm not gonna grab him, it's gonna support his weight. Control with this hand, support with this hand. Out the water, for not very long at all. Now I'm just gonna give you a quick look at this fish. Oh, she's ready to go. Around the tail. That's my control. And just a quick look. And then when she's ready to go, she's out of here. The other thing I make sure is when I'm holding a fish, I make sure I'm low to the water and I'm actually over the water. Make sure you don't like hold the fish over dry land or rocks because if it does struggle and it gets away from you, you know, it's not gonna bounce off rocks, damage itself. And I'm not a big fan of people standing up and holding the fish because it's just, it's just too far away. If you do drop it, it's got a long way to fall. So always make sure I'm low to the water and don't tend to hold the fish too high. So if it does get away from you, it hasn't got far to go. And the fact that it's gonna, it's gonna hit the water and swim away, I'm all right with that. You're not going to get a picture, just don't take the fish out of the water. Uh, always try and release your fish in nice quiet water. You know, if you've got a nice bit like this, then that's brilliant. Even if you're in fast water, keep the fish in the net and move it into a nice kind of quiet edge or something like that. Just so it doesn't have to fight the current straight away. And you can just sit there, let it chill, and then 
Just wait for him to go. He'll tell you when he's ready to go. Right, chill, bro. Quick look. It's actually a really, another really cool fish. And then back in the water. And that's how they should swim off. They should swim off, you know, good and strong, under their own power, you know, looking like they've got plenty left in the tank. Let's talk nets. This net that I use, this is from risingnets.com, risingnets.something. This is a rising net. I'll leave the link, as usual, in the description below. Go check them out. They're really good nets. A lot of thought gone into them. They're really well made. I like the shape. You see the shape? This is super cool. Rather than just your usual round net, this is actually elongated. So. This is the lunker loop, so this is the bigger of the two models, which is perfect for New Zealand. Because of this longer, kind of elongated shape, it means the fish can just sit nice and straight, nice and relaxed in the water. And I think there's three different kinds, but I like the deep net bags. It means the fish will sit nice and deep in there. If it struggles and flaps around, it's not going to bounce out the net, land on the ground or anything like that. Real good. They do a, a, uh, an extension for the handle too, so if you're on a boat or sometimes when I'm guiding locally, I'll have a longer the handled net. Really well thought out. Really good stuff. I'm also a real big fan of this uh, knotless rubber mesh. Now if you don't have this on your landing net already, please go out and get some. That old school green knotted horrible shit that the nets used to have. So bad for the fish. It just scrapes all that protective slime off them really quickly. The knots and the material. I don't even know what it is, but it splits the fins, gets caught up in the scissors, and it just, it just, it's just really bad for the fish. This stuff here, brilliant. Doesn't take that protective slime off, doesn't get caught up in the fish, doesn't split the fins, doesn't split the tail. Uh, it's just, it's really good stuff. So, if you don't have this on your landing net, go out and get some. It's pretty cheap, totally worth it, and if it is a few extra bucks, so what? It's better for the fish, right? Hopefully I've covered most of the important stuff there. Barbless hooks, Fishing as strong a tippet as you can get away with. Fight the fish hard, fight it well, get it in the net quick. And once it's in the net, making sure that fish is upright, it's fully submerged all the time, and it's relaxed and chilling out. Just treat it with a bit of respect and a bit of love. Wet hands, if you're handling a fish, handle it as little as possible. Making sure you release that fish in nice quiet water, and then waiting till it's ready to swim off on its own before you let it go. Well, those are what I pretty much think are the most important main points when it comes to good fish handling techniques. Okay, that's it for this week, guys. I hope you found that interesting or helpful or just, you know, entertained you for a few minutes. Like, comment, and if you haven't already, hit that subscribe button. I'll have another video for you on Tuesday. Have a great weekend. Go fishing. Now, I've wanted to do this video for a long time. Just needed, well, just, yeah, just needed the weather for it. I want to talk about why it's so important to really think about how long you have a fish out the water when you're unhooking, handling, and taking a picture, getting a video, whatever, that kind of stuff. Ideally, you won't get a picture or a video, and you'll keep the fish in the water, handle it as little as possible whilst unhooking it, let it go straight away, keeping it in the water the whole time. I do it all the time. I like to get a picture, I like to get a video, and I really do believe that if you do it properly, it can be done with minimal, minimal impact on the fish. But that's the point, minimal. So I think about how long I keep a fish out of the water. Now, the analogy I tend to use with my clients and just people in general conversation, that kind of stuff, is hooking, fighting, landing a fish, and then holding it out of the water, I think is pretty much the exact equivalent to us exercising as hard as you can, hard out, for that same amount of time, and then dunking your head under the water and holding your breath. So what I've done is I've found a, an uncut raw piece of footage of me hooking, landing, and fighting a fish. And what I'm gonna do is, I'm gonna do burpees for that exact amount of time, and then I'm gonna go and jump in that lake and see how long I can hold my breath for. Just to kind of give you some idea of just what you're doing to a fish when you're holding out the water. So if you've never done burpees before, it is a surefire way to wreck yourself cardiovascular wise while staying in the same spot in a very short amount of time. Back when I was doing personal training, if I wanted to just destroy somebody, I'd get them to do burpees. And it's very easy to do that. A minute of that and you're screwed. So I'm gonna be very, very tired and my heart rate is going to be very, very high by the time I get in that water, which is the whole point of the game here. I just want to try and simulate that fish after a fight being held out of the water. I don't know how this is going to go, but we'll give it a go. Right, this is pretty much where I'm going to do it right here. I have my trusty assistant. 
Elena here on hand in case I drown. Thanks to film, more importantly. Now I'm gonna split the screen. I'll show you the actual real-time hookup fight landing of the fish. And then on this, the other side of the screen, I'll do burpee for the same amount of time. Dive in there, hold my breath, see how long I can hold it for. See what happens. Was, uh, it was way less than I thought I was going to be able to do. Oh, I thought I was going to die. To regain my composure a little bit now, that was actually, we were just talking about it, that was, that was a terrible effort. But as soon as I got my head under the water, I just thought my heart was going to come out through my chest. And uh, yeah, I think I managed three seconds. We'll have a look on the playback, but I think it was like three seconds, definitely no more than four seconds. So let's translate that back to a fish and how long you hold a fish out the water, maybe for a photo or something like that, or up on the bank to try and unhook it. I've been working on a recently, no longer than six seconds out the water, up six seconds, maximum back in the water, give it a drink, let it breathe. Maybe that's a bit long. That's why it's super important if you're like, taking pictures with a friend or even if you're doing it on a timer, make sure everything is ready to go before you lift the fish out of the water so you can literally just fish out, click, 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 back in the water. I don't know, I hope that just makes you think a little bit more about how long you're keeping a fish out of the water when you're unhooking, handling, taking pictures, that kind of stuff. Like I said before, nothing wrong with taking pictures, I don't think, but if you're mindful about it and you do it properly, you know, if you're keeping a fish out of the water for 10 to 15, 20 seconds at a time, as you can see right there, it's, it's not a good thing at all. Anyway, hopefully it's enjoyable to see me in pain, but I guess the message behind it is a bit more of a serious one and one I feel real strongly about. But just, just have that in the back of your mind. Keep them in the water as much as possible. And if you don't want a picture, if you don't want a video, don't take them out of the water. Just let them go. All right, that's it for this week, guys. Hopefully you enjoyed those videos, gave you some stuff to think about. Tell me what you think about all that stuff in the comment section below. Give me a thumbs up. If you haven't subscribed already, click that button in the bottom corner, give me a follow, be much appreciated. All right, have a great week, everyone. I'll see you on the next one. Peace.